Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is tchotchke. Even though I say tchotchke, it says tchotchke. Really? I say tchotchke. Yeah, the definition is tchotchke. Hold on, let me play it. Huh. I hope that's, I'm trying to hit play from a photo. Tchotchke. <laughs> Knickknack or trinket. Um, yeah, this is, we had a word, and I, I have to go back and look at our original words. We had a word that was similar to this uh, very early on. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and I'm going to get that one. It was Daniel Newman was the guest. And hopefully this doesn't tread on anything you do, but his whole thing was very uh, Portland, you know, put a bird on it. Uh, <laughs> Port- Portlandia, you know. Um, so I gotta, I gotta figure out what that word is and I'll figure it out before, before we're done. Um, but what did you have? What'd you come up with? So, uh, I was thinking about, um, all all the things that I find at thrift stores. There's usually a shelf, uh, that's kind of near glass or wood that is just full of figurines Mm -hmm. that I hate with all my heart to be like, who would buy this? Who is this for? Like, like what? But then I realized, like, uh, two children cuddling a calf, and it's all porcelain and painted faintly. Like the little. Uh, so like I can't remember what they're called. The Hummel doll. The Hummel. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, like the Hummel snow fingers. angels, things like that. Exactly. Okay. And just. In uh, my mother-in-law used to have this, these clown figurines, I think, and one of them was holding a bunch of balloons. Oh, and I had those, yeah, yeah. They're so creepy. like, so why do you have them? Because obviously some people like them and they're fun. And so I imagine going to a convention where everyone brings just like a big old bucket of tchotchke. <laughs> and maybe this is like an ironic convention where they don't really care. They just want kind of like goofiest or the ugliest stuff. Um, but then it kind of morphed into specifically like uh, porch decorations, uh, ceramic gnomes. And so each of these gnomes has different characteristics on them, like hats, shirts, shoes, beards, that kind of stuff. And um, one of the one of my favorite numbers is the number sixty, uh, because it can be <laughs> divided evenly: uh, six, two, five, two, four, three, three, three four, two, and six. one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so imagine that each of these gnomes has different characteristics. And each of those characteristics is treated like a suit. So um, you have a suit that has, uh, you have, I guess not suits. It would it would be more like a deck. Imagine you have a deck of cards with six different suits, and then a different deck with five different suits, different deck of four different suits, three, two, one. But each of those decks, um, each card in that deck has the suits from each of the other decks. So it's one deck, 60 cards, but each card has one, two, three, four, five, six different types of uh, okay. characteristics on it. So it's it's bonkers. And so I was I was trying to think of like a trick taking game where you have these um, these crazy cards and so you can follow up um, well, I guess I didn't want to do trick taking because that's that's something I'm not ready to tackle. But <laughs> another but for your another one, one tr- your what your single trick taking game? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but but another one that I I'm not ready to tackle yet is auction. So yeah. imagine you're going to this giant convention, and instead of bringing money, you bring all these tchotchkes. and so it's basically like a giant trade, <laughs> like a giant swap using... swap meet. Yeah, exactly. So you're bringing the things you are selling, and they are their currency as well. Interesting. So you buy tchotchkes with tchotchkes. So it's not necessarily like a straight-up trade, because you're going to be bidding with other people. So one person would put up a lot of, of a tchotchke, 
and then other people in their bids, which would kind of work like a trick to be like, oh, I'll give you this bearded person. So obviously you're offering bearded gnomes. So if a, if a person doesn't have a bearded gnome, they're probably out of that auction. Gotcha. And so you want to play the best bearded gnome in order to get that tchotchke, which you're collecting for some unknown reason. If I don't know the reason that real people do it, I probably don't. I need a better reason for people in this game to be collecting uh, stuff. I can give you a real reason because my father-in-law owned an auction house for many, many years. Um, yes. And there will be dozens of hummels going at a time. And as well as, you know... Um, just like a glassware, uh, weird mm -hmm. posters, sometimes some odd trading cards, and then sometimes like a, a Norman Rockwell painting will go through, the, or or an Abraham Lincoln <laughs> signature, you know. Um, but uh, it's weird; it's hard to tell. The, the, the what I gain from it is a lot of it is older people that knew the value when these things came out because they were very expensive to buy, and they kind of are hanging mm -hmm. on to that, whether they're worth that now or not it's that thing of your youth, you know, it's, it's just like mm -hmm. something that we hold on to, but you know, our grandparents instead of us. Uh, and a nice. lot of it was resellers. So like, that's to give you any motivation in the game. Reselling mm -hmm. is, is probably like 90% of the people there have a little shop and they're going to mark, try to mark it up. Nice. So, all that, right. That would be the motivation. So I guess, yeah. So I guess that makes sense in the convention setting if you're if you're buying stuff with stuff to sell that stuff <laughs> well you might as well just not put money into it right yeah exactly you put money in on day one and if and hopefully have never put more money in since just constantly there you upgrading. go exactly <laughs> that's pretty cool all right so, mine, so what you got for judge <sighs> mine is a deck building game and i'll explain why i went with deck building uh sort of to really just kind of go against everything deck building is about. What is deck building? It's about like, you know, very like, like masculine fighting games for the most part, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is called the handing of handing down of mother's doll collection. Nice. Uh, which is a sort of a sore subject in my house in that my mom had this really big doll collection that nobody could take. Uh, nobody had the room. Uh, I have the daughters that would have been great for it, but not the space and all that stuff. But uh, this mother has, let's say, six kids or five to four kids or I guess however many players or kids uh, and a very wealthy collection of dolls. Um, at the end of the game, she's going to distribute them. And uh, over the course of the game, it's deck building. You're going to go year by year. Uh, in the, in your life until the mother decides to sell the collection or to get rid of the collection. Mm -hmm. um, you're all going to have a different age and you're going to start out different ages, which, which is going to set some things about your character, set some people as an, as an, at, an, at certain advantages and some at disadvantages to try to gain points you know, through the year. So the deck building aspect is you're going to um, build a new deck each year by getting X amount of cards then you're going to shuffle them and you're only going to play a certain amount of them. So these are going to be things that you do around the house, things that you do with your mother, things that you do um, to gain things for yourself. Because at the end of the game, and some of these are going to be victory points, but at the end of the game, the mother is going to hand, go through these five different categories to see who deserves this collection. Categories are how much space do you have? Uh, how, how safe is your home to, you know, to protect these? Like if you have a lot of pets, you know, all these things are going to come up in the cards as you kind of go mm. through your life. Um, how close are you to your mother over the course of all these years? Uh, how, what's your knowledge of the dolls? And then what is the trust that you've gained that you're not going to want to sell these? You know, you're going to, huh. you're, you're going to hang on to them for your children and your children. Um, what I wanted to do was have it have you ever played any of the like Mario Party uh oh, yeah. So in them you gain the stars during the game, but then there's the bonus stars at the end that is just like oh man, you know, they're like yeah. they're they're not random. Uh well one of them sometimes is, but they're all you just don't know which ones they're going to be. So what mm -hmm. I wanted to do was these are the five categories but we're only going to do three of them at the end of the game for the bonus. You know, you're going to gain, mm. you're going to gain, um, you know, 
points every year for the things that you do. But these big bonus points at the end that can swing everything are only going to be three of those five categories. Hmm. Then you then then the doc collection split up. Uh, somebody could get a whole ton of it. Somebody could get some of it. Whoever gets the most of it wins the game. Huh. So you were saying that you build a deck each year. Tell me more about that. So what I thought was they're small decks, but um, we're going to go for... Oh, and the, the amount of years is to be determined. So everybody starts mm-hmm. out at, at an age... Uh, between like maybe like 10 and like 17 or something like that. And then Mm -hmm. it's going to go from anywhere from, you know, like eight turns to 12 turns. And there'll be something in there that kind of lets that, lets that, um, that range build. So building a deck each turn, I kind of wanted to approach it like almost like pulling from a bag where you assemble these bag things from and you pull from it. So your deck each turn might be 20 cards and you're only going to do one hand of five um Mm -hmm. so it's tiny decks tiny decks um i imagine uh with four players 20 this kind of the same cards coming out over and over but you know more than just the 20 cards per player and i just want to see this i do my five card hand i try to get through it you know do combos to get more cards in my deck and all and then everything i used is out back to the center everything i have remaining i might be able to pick something from to kind of you know get me going to the next year and then you reassemble these piles and and start again you get to mm. what, I, what i want to do and the whole idea of it was that like sometimes you play through a whole deck building game and you're like oh man my strategy really didn't work here i want you to mm-hmm. be able to enhance your strategy each turn and then every turn the mother's looking for different things you know there's a there's you know things that she's going to score based on based on what year that is and how things are going so, so what know. happened to your mom's dolls? Uh, I believe uh, that nobody has them. They <laughs> may have been just uh, given like to charity. Uh, oh. She had a huge uh, case, which went to my antique dealer father-in-law <laughs> with the auction house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the huge case for them. But the dolls, I don't know. I think my daughters were each going to get one. And then the rest of it was just going to go. There was just nowhere to keep them. They, you know, sold wow. the house to my brother or whatever. Uh, That's it, probably what's going to happen to my board games. Oh, my God. I have so <laughs> my. Let me go through it. My collection of Muppet figures, uh, action okay. figures. My second collection of, of Muppet action figures. And then the third carded collection of Muppet action figures. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with all of those? Um <laughs> That's just the start of it. I mean, it's, I've gotten rid of so much over the years. I had a storage, I had, I still have a storage unit that is almost exclusively Lego. Uh, mm-hmm. that at some point, I should let my son play with them. Um, <laughs> I am the nah, father. He'll be I, fine. I'm the father in the Lego movie that doesn't let his son play with his Legos. <laughs> They're not toys. What are you talking about? Um, no, I have a, I have a lot that I've, I've gotten down considerably in the years, but. Um, there's definitely stuff like that. Like, what do you do with all your board games when, yeah, you know, when you get older? And this doll collection uh, is just a sore subject in the family because nobody will take it, so she feels insulted. <laughs> I kind of want to twist that around to where everybody kind of wants at it because it's wealthy and valuable and means something to them. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe you could play it, you know? You know, you could go really far on the trust not to sell, or you know whatever, but you really don't want it, and you're going to sell it. <laughs> um, yes. You know, I I don't know. I have no idea how this works, but I feel like it could sort of spin deck building, spin deck building on a different, slower, more meditative angle where the deck is reset over and over and over, and you kind of kind of learn and grow with it. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, that's what I got. <laughs> Woo. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us in another episode of Design Diary. And I am Jason Tagmeyer. I'm Rob Kramer. I'll talk to you next week. And I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.